in the Trump cabinet, there's always room to move. You know, we, we started out naively about this time, about two years ago, um, when we thought on this show, ha ha, it would be simple, it would be helpful, it might be clarifying for our viewers. If we could just simply chart, just simply show our viewers a list, a simple list of top level abrupt departures from the Trump administration, right? Started off naive and super innocent. So th this was the summer of 2017. We're like, oh, we'll just make a list. Uh, within a few months, it started to become apparent that that big stack of names and titles might be a little intimidating. The font's kind of small there. So we tried switching to pictures, but that ended up just looking like one of those triple bingo, guards, bingo cards you get at a really high level church hall bingo, like where one of the newbie first time players can't keep up because everybody's playing triple bingo and nobody can go that fast unless you're a pro. So we dropped the bingo card look, then we went back to list format. <clears throat> Eventually, we, we stopped trying to make them all in one column. Um, then we actually tried moving the camera back a little bit so we could keep the two columns, but the columns could get taller and you could see more of them. Eventually, we had to pull the camera back far enough that you could like see my jeans under the desk because we were pulling the camera back so far to make the screen as big as possible. Then we ultimately tried three columns instead of two, but we had to make the font so small people thought we were kidding and that those couldn't really be real names and real job titles. They really were. Eventually, in order to try and make the font big enough to read while keeping all the relevant names and titles on the screen of all the people departing the Trump administration, we ultimately went to a whole different wall of the studio. Literally, they put in a whole big monitor that was the size of a wall. And we thought, whew, now we've bought ourselves enough real estate. That might work. Turns out that taxed the system a little bit, and we had blackouts from time to time. Oops. <laughs> Eventually, we tried wrapping around to the other wall, but that ended up being sort of folly, technical-wise, <laughs> so we gave that up, too. And you know what? I am not the only person who has tried to track this stuff this way. I mean, this was a good-faith effort. And people are still trying to allow people to visualize the magnitude of turnover in the Trump administration. I mean, earlier today on MSNBC, they had a valiant effort. I thought this was pretty good. Just picking the top tier departures from the Trump administration, organizing them by year, right? This was a good effort. I still think it looks like 17 different days shopping lists that accidentally got merged into the same notes document. CNN recently started doing kind of an artful one where they make everybody look like a star. So, you know, it's like Hollywood Squares, but instead of three by three with Bruce Valanche in the middle, it's a row of 15 with Tom Price in the middle and little spark shooting out of the bottom of John Kelly there. Woo! I mean, it is, it's hard to track. No matter how much time and effort you spend trying to visually organize the information, it's too much to get your head around. I mean, even if you just talk about people who had their cabinet level jobs or other super senior jobs, I mean, I mean that's... Tom Price, Scott Pruitt, Ryan Zinke, Rex Tillerson, John Kelly, Jim Mattis, David Shulkin, Kirsten Nielsen, Jeff Sessions, Nikki Haley, Linda McMahon, right? There was the acting defense secretary guy, Patrick Shanahan, is too. There were almost cabinet secretaries like Andy Puzder, remember? And that's all separate and apart from all the national security advisors Trump has gone through and all the White House press secretaries he's gone through and all the communications directors he's gone through and all of the other senior White House staff he has gone through in various scandals and blowups. So today, when Alex Acosta became, I mean, what is it, the 11th, 12th, 13th, depending on you, how you count, the, the nth Trump cabinet official to resign in disgrace or scandal or in extravagant, vulgar, melodramatic conflict with the president? I mean, when Alex Acosta resigned today, he was following a well-trod path. I mean... I mean, just his job. I mean, remember, Alex Acosta only got the labor secretary job in the first place after Trump's first pick for the job, that guy Andy Puzder, was derailed by the emergence of the videotape of his wife in a disguise on the Oprah Winfrey show talking about being battered by her husband. I mean, the worst thing that has ever happened involving any non-imprisoned cabinet or would-be cabinet official in any other presidency in the modern era would rank like 12th or 13th in terms of scandal potency in the Trump cabinet. But the scandal that took Alex Acosta's job today is one that is not over. Um, his role in securing an inexplicably lenient non-prosecution agreement for the wealthy and well-connected pedophile Jeffrey Epstein um, 
was was public knowledge. You would think that it might have been the sort of thing that might, would have popped in the vetting for Alex Acosta before Trump ever appointed him to a cabinet position in the first place. But that role of Alex Acosta in signing the non-prosecution agreement for Jeffrey Epstein, that apparently only became too much of an embarrassment for the Trump administration when Epstein ended up back in court this week, this time in New York. Well, tonight, federal prosecutors in New York told the court in a surprise filing that Epstein shouldn't receive bail now that he's been arrested again, and he should be held in custody until his trial, until he goes on trial on these new sex trafficking charges. They say he should be kept in custody and not let out on bail because, among other things, they say he's been tampering with witnesses. They now allege that he wired hundreds of thousands of dollars to two of his alleged co-conspirators in a way that prosecutors say suggests he might have been trying to tamper with them as witnesses and keep them from testifying against him. He allegedly sent that $350,000 immediately after the Miami Herald published the bombshell investigative reporting that basically broke the Epstein case back open and that resulted in these new charges and that resulted in the labor secretary today becoming the nth Trump cabinet official to lose his job in scandal. The investigative reporter from the Miami Herald who did that work, who set all of this in motion, is our guest. Next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.